Good morning, everybody. My name is Deborah Byrne from uh, Deborah Byrne Psychology Services. Um, I'm a psychology across uh, social media. Uh, this morning I'm going to talk about uh, this week's blog which is uh, Parenting Teens Part 4 and it's about typical versus troubling behaviour. Um, now I go into a lot of detail in the blog and there are uh, a number of categories I discuss. So if you if you want the detail, check out the blog. It's at www.debrabyrnepsychologyservices.com and um you know you'll get you'll get more detail there than I will talk about this morning. Um, just a reminder: each blog builds on a you know builds one on top of the other. So have a look back and um, you know if you you haven't read any of the first ones, go back to the beginning and read them through because I will be referring to some of them this morning. Um, I'll also be refer referring to a blog uh, about depression in teens, which is a another another blog that's up there. And I think it's a very important blog that you should have a look at. I think getting to know the signs and symptoms of depression in teens is hugely important, as well as um, there's a blog on other things like bipolar. Um, uh, I've written a number of blogs on mental health, so check them out. It's important that, you know, as parents um, these symptoms, as we know that uh, a lot of things start in teen in, teen, in the teen years. So. Just have a look at all those, you know, those blogs and think about what it is you need to know. Maybe just even print them out and have them as reference or, you know, have them marked or something that, you know, you can go back and refer to them if something, uh, you know, if something's nagging at you and if something is, uh, you know, worrying you or you need to, you know, you need to, to think about, you know, do I need to, is this something I need to worry about? You can go back and refer and have a think. The other thing I would say to you is, Always trust your good instinct. As a parent, you know your child the best. So trust your good instinct. And if you feel you need to go and talk to somebody, then go and talk to your GP first. Um, they can then, you know, they can then, ha you can go and air your, your, you know, your worries and maybe they can say, okay, that might be a problem and I'd like to see the child. And you can then bring the child in and, and have it, and have it, they can have a chat with the child as well. Um, so, you know, always trust your good instinct first is what I would say. Now, as I said, the blogs build on one another. So the red flags, there is a few areas I'm going to talk about this morning. Changing appearance, increasing arguments. Um, I'm also going to look at mood swim, swings, drugs and alcohol uh, problems and new friends. Now... Mm, okay, I'm going to talk about the red flags. Not every kid will hit the red flags, okay? Um, but I would say to you, the earlier you intervene, the more likelihood it is that you'll be successful. Um, always keep the lines of communication open. Always, always keep the lines of communication open. That's extremely important. So, in saying that, changing appearance, okay, they hit the teens. We've talked about it in the previous videos. We've talked about it in the previous blogs. They're going to change their appearance. They're going to be rejecting you. They're going to be rejecting who they were as a child. We talked about this. We talked about how the brain doesn't fully form until they're about 26. So, yes, they're going to change their appearance. It's normal. It's normal to want to fit in with your peers. It's normal to want to keep up with the latest fashion, particularly among girls. There are coming, you know, I'm not going to be sexist here. So, you know, boys will do it too. Um, you know, so, you know, they want to emanate, you know, whoever it is they're, they think is great. Latest video, whatever it is, a music star, whoever. They're going to want to, you know, they're going to want to copy them. It's pretty normal. The red flags come up when it's accompanied by problems at school. Um, anxiety, depression and any other negative problems. So tying it in then with the friends, if they've, you know, it's perfectly normal to make new friends when they move on to secondary school. They, you know, they get they get mixed up. Even even if friends went from primary school into secondary school, the school could have divided them up. They're going to, you know, they're going to be changing. So to, to make new friends is normal. 
to make new friends and then develop other things like behavior issues, getting in trouble with the law, um, you know, um, you know, failing grades. Um, we're, we're talking about, you know, going out into the extremes, the behavior, no, no house rules, you know, house rules that you've set up are being disregarded. Um, uh, you know, they, they, they won't take the consequences, um, anything, any kind of displays of unhealthy boundaries. Again, I've linked out to what healthy boundaries should be. Um, things like that, you know, be the private investigator. I've said this before, you need to be the private investigator with kids. So see what is working and, you know, what, what is normal behavior and see what isn't normal behavior by checking into uh, you know, knowing your child, keeping the lines of communication open and then seeing, OK, they've changed their appearance. They're with new friends. Um, you know, what else? What else is happening? More likely than not, though, if they are doing, um, you know, something really bad, like getting in trouble with the law, if they're drinking, doing drugs or experimenting, um, then, you know, it's a cry for help. It's a cry for help. They are looking for you to intervene. They are looking for you to say, I see you. I know you're in trouble. I'm going to help you. I still love you. No matter what you do, I still love you. Come on, let me help you. Um, in terms of the drugs and alcohol, the thing I would say to you is, okay, kids will experiment. Um, you know, once off. You know, a one-off or a couple of times, you know, I, I wouldn't be too worried. It's when it becomes persistent and you recognise that they're using, they're using it maybe as a crutch or they're using it in conjunction with other behaviour. Again, it's not going to be very clear-cut, okay, they're going to be doing this, this and this, and that, that means this. It's going to be you being the investigator and seeing that, OK, he's made up a new, he or she has, has uh, gotten in with a, a new crowd. Uh, consequences aren't being followed. Uh, you know, house rules aren't being followed. We have drinking and drugs going on. We have uh, failing school grades. We have, um, you know, our increased arguments in the home. Um, all of these are going to be all red flags. OK, it, it, it may be very subtle. And it could be as extreme as that, that they're, you know, it's red flags in your face doing stuff. You need to intervene. If they're doing stuff that badly, you need to be intervening straight away. The more subtle stuff could be in terms of escalation of um, arguments and things like that in the home. It could be a sign of uh, being bullied outside the home. So be aware of that. Um, we could also have, um, you know, the mood swings. Again, I said the mood swings were normal. It's a normal part of being a teen, but if they are becoming increasingly withdrawn, um, again, the failing grades, if they are uh, having sleep problems, if they're having anxiety, and particularly if they are talking about suicide, suicide, any talk of suicide should be taken seriously and intervention immediately. Um, again, you know, is this normal for my teen? Are these mood swings a bit more than just normal behaviour for them? OK, you've got to think about it in terms of your own child. What's normal for one kid is going to be different for another kid. So you've really got to think in terms of what is normal behaviour for my child and what isn't in terms of the mood swings. Um, Increased arguments that will escalate up into fights. Uh, fighting outside of, you know, outside of the home, fighting outside of school, fighting in school, um, skipping school, getting in trouble with the law. All of those are red flags. We all know that. They are all, you know, common sense here. Use your common sense. If it is any, you know, anything that is, you would say, oh my God, that's a red flag. Then early intervention, talking, if you need help, GP, self-refer to a psychologist. Um, but early intervention is what is needed here.
Um, again, I would issue the early warning signs of depression, anxiety um, and eating disorders and check all the eating disorders out because it's not just about anorexia or uh, bulimia. It can also be about binge eating disorder. Um, so check them all out. Make sure you know their signs. Make sure you know the signs, of, particularly around depression um, and anxiety. And you know what signs look out for around bullying. Um, so, you know. Be your own detective. Be your own child's detective. Get in there. Know your child. As I said, these blogs build on one another. Know your child. Keep the lines of communication open. Hugely important. We've talked about it. Teach them skills to regulate their emotions. I talked about this last week. Have a look at the blogs. Read them. Get informed. It's never, uh, it's never too early to get informed and it's never too late. OK, no matter how bad things seem, it is never too late to get an intervention going. It is never too late to get yourself informed. It is never too late to reach out for help, um, even by reaching out for help for, your, for yourself. Um, it's going to have a ripple effect onto them. Uh, and I talked about this in anger management and in uh, reducing your own stress um, and learning healthy boundaries yourself. So if by changing your own behaviour, it's going to have a ripple effect out onto the kids. It's going to have a ripple effect and it's going to be a positive ripple effect. Um, and they will, they will, um, you know, they do, they do come around quite quickly, kids. They, they really do. They bounce back a lot quicker than, than uh, most adults would. Um, so my last piece of advice is don't panic. If something, you know, if you think it's something, um, reach out for help. Don't panic. There's nothing that can't be helped. There is nothing that can't be, you know, there is no problem too great that can't be solved, as they say. Um, we're, we're here for you. You know, uh, uh, there are plenty of colleagues around the country who would be very willing to help you. Uh, your GP is always willing to help you. Um, you know, don't ever feel that you're going to be on your own. You're not. You're not on your own. You know, there are people here who can can help. Um, so I'll leave it there this morning. Uh, check out the blog. As I said, it's at www.debrabarnpsychologyservices.com. And um, I've given the list of, um, you know, normal behaviour um, as well as, you know, what we would consider bad behaviour or negative behaviour. So think about it. Think about you know, think about becoming the detective in your family as a parent. Uh, keep the lines of communication open, as I said. And um, I believe it at that. So good morning and thank you all for listening.